Welcome ladies and gentlemen to my humble 40k channel. Today I will be going over how to paint a Dark Angel Master in Gravis Armor. If you fancy yourself a collector or player of the best Space Marine faction out there, then you can use a lot of what is being covered today to help paint the rest of your Dark Angel army, as a lot of it is going to be using the same colors that we will be going over today. I am going to use about 16 colors on this model, plus some varnish. And as always, the list of colors in order of application will be down in the description if you want a checklist. With the preamble out of the way, let's begin. First, an undercoat with Vallejo Black. As with most of my models, I like to have the black undercoat airbrushed on for a nice smooth finish. You don't need an airbrush for this, but a paintbrush will work just fine. Next is Caliban Green, which I airbrushed on so I can get a nice smooth finish. This next step is one I picked up from a different YouTube channel a while ago. Probably next level painting, but I can't remember for sure as it's been quite a while and I've seen it on multiple different painting tutorials. Here I am going to use Vallejo Gloss Varnish and I'm going to air spray it all over the model. This is going to make it very shiny, which we're going to get rid of in a minute, but more importantly, it is going to create a seal all over the paint. That seal is what I am looking for as it helps washes slide off the flat areas and into the crevices with a minimal coffee stain effect. Speaking of washes, next is a known oil wash all over the model and areas where it's mainly flat, like at the shoulder, I add a bit of Lamian Medium to dilute the wash just a little bit more, but for most of the application, it's straight out of the pot. You still want to ensure that nothing rests on the flat surfaces, but the varnish should go a long way in helping that. And once this is applied and dried, this is going to get rid of that gloss effect, that shiny effect, all over the model. The armor itself is almost complete, and the last bit is to hit it with an edge highlight of Warpstone Glow. Now, I'm not going to lie, this is going to be one of the longest steps that you're going to take to finish this model, and it's going to take forever. But it's a needed step to make all of those armor details pop out. Now that the armor is done and looks absolutely fantastic like the lion intended his sons to be, let's move on to the next dominant color and that is going to be Mephiston Red in all of the red places and especially on the outer side of the cloak. Be especially careful on the cloak itself as it's better to go two to three light thin coats or more so that way you have a nice smooth finish. In hindsight, I should have had the cloak separate, so it could be airbrushed, but eh, I never bothered, and thus here we are. To shade the red, I use Karaborg Crimson to shade in all of these red areas. Now on the cloak in particular, I only recess shade the deepest spots so I didn't dirty up the entire cloak. For the inside of the cloak and various parchments, I use Zandri Dust to get a nice base coat. Again, be careful with the inside of the cloak. It is better to use multiple thin coats and get a smooth consistency than to have it marred with scratches of brush strokes. Note, I didn't hit up any of the skulls on the metal yet. That is going to come later. Now for all the Xandri dust, I washed it over with Seraphim Sepia to give it a bit of a different tone compared to the rest of the bone colored items that are yet to come. 
I also didn't hit the inside of the cloak as I wanted to maintain that vibrancy. For a highlight on the pieces that I just did, I used Ushapti Bone for a nice crisp highlight. Moving on to the metals, I used Retributor Armor in all of the gold pieces scattered around the model. For all of the silverish pieces, I used Lead Belcher. And on top of the gold pieces, there are little skulls embedded on them. I chose to make them look like actual skulls for some additional contrast to the model. This is optional. If you want to leave them gold, leave them gold. For this, I used Xandri Dust. With all the colors blocked in now, there's only some minor washes to do and highlights. On the washes, I went with Reichland Flesh Shade on all of the gold pieces. Then I used Nuln Oil on all of the silver pieces. And the last wash is Agrax Earthshade on the little skulls. Now there's just three more paints to go and we are done with the painting. This time we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet to highlight all of the red edges. After that, Liberator Gold will be applied on all the gold pieces. This isn't really so much of a, as a edge highlight, but more along the lines that you're gonna be covering most of the gold and avoiding the recesses. And finally, last and least, is Stormhost Silver. You want to edge with this all over the silver pieces, but also the sharpest points on the gold to give the impression of very sharp edges, like at the points on the Iron Halo. And that's it, the model is done. You can toss a decal on there if you want, just like I did, and base it however it suits you. I gotta say, I am quite pleased with how this little guy turned out. He will be an excellent addition to my Dark Angel army, which is obviously the best army in the game. As mentioned, a full list of colors in order of application will be in the description below. I hope this video is useful in you painting your model. Until next video.